it's time to cook with Susan Beck. And here it is, middle of summer, and a great time to make jam with all those berries that are available. Well, I picked strawberries a couple weeks ago, I guess about two weeks ago, and I didn't have time to make the jam then, so I froze five cups of strawberries that I'm going to use for today's jam. My raspberries are looking good. We can make some raspberry jam down the road. Now, all of these jam recipes with fruit go together in a similar pattern. You are going to need a lot of sugar. In today's case, seven cups of sugar. It really shows us that jam is not the healthiest of things, but you know, it sure does taste good, especially sm smothered on a fresh baked homemade bread. I'll put the link for my classic white bread. Um, in my description below this video that you can look at because mm, 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 that is my favorite way to eat this jam. But my kids go through lots of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, so that is a common way for it to be used too. Um, we need something to thicken those berries up. Sure Gel is my go-to, and this is a fruit pectin, and it's like a starch that you need something to thicken all the juices because fruit is there's a lot of water in fruit, so we have something that makes it set up and it's it thick. So that will be what we're using. Now, this fruit pectin, the Sure Gel, comes with great recipes for whatever kind of fruit you might like to use. So today I'm going to just make strawberry, but my next batch is going to be strawberry and rhubarb, and then hopefully that raspberry crop is good and we can make some raspberry jam as well. Now, I don't recommend doubling. So yes, I want to make a lot of jam, but it's harder to get it to thicken and the Sure Gel company just over and over tells you do not thicken or do not try to do a double batch because it will not thicken well. All right, other ingredients, we're going to use just a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of butter. That is to help keep the foaming down. That is completely optional. My recipe does not require any lemon juice or water, but certain um, fruit mixtures might call for that as well. But today I'm just gonna teach you the basics of this. Last thing to know, no canner needed. We're gonna use a hot water bath when we are done to seal our jars. If I don't want to just keep this in the refrigerator and use within a few weeks, I will seal my jam in jelly jars or pint jars. This recipe will make seven or eight jelly jars or about four pints and then I will need these rings to fasten around these canning lids. Into my heavy pot I am going to put my five cups of strawberries. I'm just going to set that open with the scissors. Now mine are pretty well mashed up especially from being frozen they just don't stay as nice and whole. Then I'm going to just take a potato masher and just kind of beat them up and crush them. You could use a food processor, but you do not want these pureed. You want chunks of fruit, so be careful not to over um, crush those. All right, into there, let's get our heat going here. I'm going to turn this up like on medium-high heat. And then into there, we are going to add our package of Sure Gel. Now, this is the only two things going in right now. I strongly urge you to have your sugar measured out. It's not going to go in until this reaches a boil, but we have it ready to go so that we're not fumbling around trying to measure out seven cups of sugar when we're ready. All right, so we're going to stir that pectin in, and then we're just going to let this work its way to a boil, stirring frequently. Now, a minute ago, I showed you those canning jars. Now, my jars, that was just a couple on the counter there, but the ones I'm actually going to use are in my dishwasher. And I waited till my dishwasher was pretty much through its cycle, and I could tell it was on the drying point. I want hot jars when I fill them. I got hot mixture, and I want that hot mixture to go into a very clean, hot jar. So I'm timing this to go with the end of my dishwasher cycle. Now, if I'm going to freeze this, this could just go into any, you know, Tupperware containers or something. And um, maybe you want to just make a little for yourself and give the rest away. Otherwise, it is quite a bit of jam to use up in, you know, probably like a month's time you'd want to use it all if you're going to put it in the fridge. The strawberries I could use a little more crushing. I prefer the smaller jars when I am making jam. 
you know, if jam sits in the fridge too long, it can get kind of sugary. And I really um, find that if I use the small jars, we never have any go-to waste. Or if I use the big jars, we just don't seem to go through it quite fast enough. Also into here, we're gonna put that like just half a teaspoon of butter just to prevent some of the foaming. I've really never had a whole lot of trouble with foaming, but I usually do put that butter in. If you do, you'd wanna skim off any of the foam before you started filling your jars. Again, we're just gonna stir here and there fairly frequently. I want this to get to a boil. While well, my strawberries and pectin are coming to a boil, I am going to just put all my cans into a little saucepan of water and turn that on to, then I will just turn this on to some high heat and just let that come to a little simmer. I wanna soften up those rings before I add them to the top of the jars. So a good time to do that is before we get ready to stir in the sugar and we're getting pretty close to wanting to do that. It's been almost exactly 10 minutes that my strawberries and pectin have been on this burner and I now have what I would call a very good, strong rolling boil, meaning when I stir, this continues to boil. We don't want a wimpy boil where when I stir, the bubbles kind of go away. So we're ready to add seven cups of granulated sugar and you're gonna to wanna to be stirring as you slowly pour that in. There we go. It's getting thicker here. All right, all seven cups are in. Now we need to bring this back to that rolling boil again that continues to boil when I stir. Now that the sugar's in, we need to stir almost constantly. We want rolling boil without the bubble stopping when we stir. Sugar burns easily, so stir a lot. All right, my canning lids are in that simmering hot water. I'm just gonna turn them off and leave them stay in the water until I'm ready to put them on the top of my canning jars. Back in my other pot, my sugar, pectin, strawberries, and that tiny bit of butter are still heating up. We have not reached that rolling boil after adding in the sugar. So we're just gonna keep on heating at medium high. Got some good bubbles going on there. Let's see if they stay when I stir. So-so. Mm, Mm, now we've got that rolling boil going. Look at how when I stir, I'm not losing those big bubbles. So now I've got my timer going for one minute at this rate. Well, that one minute is up, so we're going to move this closer to our canning jars. I like to work on a nice cutting board here that has all my jars on top of it. And before I start ladling, I just want to really quickly get my big soup kettle. This is my big stainless steel pot. I want to get that started. I'm going to put the lid on that too. I want to keep that heat trapped in and I want to get this up to a boil so that this water is ready for the hot water bath. And this is filled, oh, almost to halfway because I need the tops of my jars covered for the hot water bath. All right, it's time to ladle. To fill my jelly jars, I can use either a ladle or I have this little light like, cream pitcher with a little pour spout that works rather nicely. So I'm going to use that today. We just need to fill each jar. We want to fill to the point where the rings start. So right below that is where I'm going to go. And I don't ever do half jars. So if you have a little extra, one thing I did was I had this itsy bitsy jar that's only a half a cup that I can use or I'll just put this into as I mentioned a Tupperware container put it in the fridge and this will be the first jam that we use in fact there's really no reason if you're going to use a jar right away to waste the 
canning lid on it. You might as well just put some right into the fridge to start. All right, and these jars are hot. They came right out of my dishwasher, remember? Nice, hot, clean canning jars. And we'll just continue filling. The jars are all full. I ended up getting, what, eight pints plus one of those little half cups. These are just great too for giving away as gifts, those little, like, almost like a little sample size. So before I put my lids on, I want to be sure that there is no jelly, and I always have some, around the top. I like to just use a damp paper towel because I know that's clean and sanitary compared to like using my dishcloth or something. So I just want to make sure around the edges where those rings are going to fasten and around the top where my lid goes on that that is all nice and clean with nothing that would get in the way of sealing. So I'm going to do that with each and every jar. These jars are still a bit warm, remember? That's why I'm holding them with a pot holder. They're not bad to hold for a short period of time, but if I hold them very long, they seem a little bit warm on my hand. Now we'll put the lids on. I like to just use a tongs to pull them out of there because remember they were in boiling water or simmering water that we um, just turned off a little bit ago. And we're just going to put a lid on to each one of these. And then once I have done that, let's push that together. All right, I'll get those other ones in just a minute. We're going to then, and once again, I just want to be sure I don't get it too hot, so I'm going to set on my pot holder, twist on a ring. Okay, tighten those up as much as you can. Usually I put them on, and then before I set them into my boiling water, I will usually give them one more twist just to be sure I have them as tight as possible. All right, time to double check that every lid is on as tight as possible. Now, I just wanna mention, don't let making jams and little canning projects, especially these ones where it's just a hot water bath, scare you. I taught my kids to make jam when they were like eight years old. And you know, we'd do it together, I'd always be near them, but um, it's really not a difficult challenge. Um, also clean up, some people are nervous about huh, lots of sticky stuff to clean up, but remember, it's all sugar, so hot water, in your sink or your dishwasher, it just melts that jam right away. All right, I wanna talk about this invention. I don't know who came up with this, but I absolutely love this canning tongs. And what's so great about it is, it's got curved edges that just fit around my jar lid. So when I go to stick them into the water, it's just so slick and easy because I don't have to worry about getting my hand down too far and touching that water. And remember that water is rising as I put in more jam. Got displacement going on for all my science friends out there. So in go all of my jars, except the one. I kept one that I'm just going to keep out to taste and use right away. All right, I should have room for one more. That's my little one that I can Give us like a nice little gift along with a few other things I can. So we're going to hot water bath for 10 minutes. That means this needs to come to a boil and for 10 minutes it will sit in the boil. Okay, our hot water bath is underway. Notice that my jars are not touching and every lid is submersed underwater. We're gonna put a lid on this and let it boil. In 10 minutes we just reverse the process using those lovely tongs again. Move them over. I'm going to put them on my cutting board because these need to sit and rest a bit. There is going to be a little bit of a bubble to the top of these lids and we need each one of these to pop to show us that it has sealed and that will happen as these cool down. Oh, look at that beautiful jam. Oh, did you hear that pop? That means the jar has sealed. That's actually the third one I heard. I don't know if you can tell, but there's just a slight rise to this jar. And that part right there on that one still needs to pop down. Give a little pop and it'll sink in. There's my timer that our 10 minutes was up. Well, I've got my 
bread here ready to be slathered with some of this delicious strawberry jam. Mm, let's see how this turned out today. Mm. It's really sweet, but that strawberry flavor really comes through. And mm, I just love jam over jelly. I love having that little chunk of, you know, real strawberry in there. Just kind of a nice summery treat with those beautiful strawberries. Try it with strawberries or any other fruit.